So welcome to chapter five. Woohoo! Electronics. Electronics chapter. If you want to see what's in the contents of this chapter, you just flip back one page to one seven two. You can see okay electronics. They will they have a list of questions there. That's your lesson outcome for uh, the chapter, and uh, you will learn three topics. You have electron five point one. Uh, five point two diodes, five point three transistors. Okay, but before we jump into five point one, let's look at an overview of this chapter so that you know what to expect. You what to expect and why we have to learn this chapter. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about electronics. Do you know what electronics are? If I say electronic device, up when I can't spell. So let's talk. About, okay, let me rephrase the question. Let's. Look at electric versus electronic. Do you think that's do you think they're the same or do you think they're different? What do you think? Different, but I don't know how, okay. Electronics are devices that need electricity to operate, question mark. Electricity is shocking. Different, but both involve electricity. Okay, so, okay. I did say it's different, but don't know how. It says electronic has algorithms. Electronic is an item. Electric is a power source. I'm just, I'm quiet because I'm waiting to see if any more messages come in. Electronic is a device and electric is an energy. Electric energy, okay. Electronic uses energy. Good tries. I'm glad you are trying to think of the answers. So very good tries. Um, not entirely correct. So although... When we talk about energy, there's electrical energy, there's no electronic energy. That's, that much is true, yes. But that doesn't mean electric is only energy because the word electric, uh, it's very, it's a bit vague, like, huh? it's, it's a kind of a, um, a big term. So you have electrical energy, you have electrical circuits, you have electrical devices, you have electrical whatever, like, okay, got a lot of electrical stuff. So actually, right, actually, actually this is supposed to be a straight line. But that was not a straight line. So Miss Ho will try again. Okay, so I'm just drawing the line here because once I found out how to draw the line, I'm so excited. I want to draw lines everywhere. Draw straight lines, I mean. Okay, so here's here's what's happening. Let me clear space so I can explain a bit more. So you see, right, when we talk about electric and electronic, um, it's like this. You have electric devices. You also have electronic devices. Both use energy. They do. So electric, it's not just that, oh, it's a power source. That's electrical energy, which is correct. But there are also some things called electrical devices. There are, which means electrical devices also use electrical energy. So here's the difference. Here's the easiest difference uh, in, to, to understand. Why I put an electrical? She put an electronic. I want to talk electronic. Okay, I will move the box here. Electronic devices are anything that's programmable. Now now you think about it, look at the, the devices you have around you that all operate based on electricity. Oh, okay, and then I want you to identify, think about it, which one got, is programmable, that means got programs, you can actually put programs inside. And which one, uh, no need program, can still operate without a program. Okay, you think of okay. think about it and give me some examples. Give me some examples of programmable devices. Give me some advanced, uh, examples of programmable devices. Can you give me any computers, phone, some more, anything else? TV, uh, yes, TV definitely for sure because you have programs now, right? You see the audio and video. Those are programs as well. Calculators, yes, correct. Calculators also for sure. Samsung smart fridge. Hey, I put smart fridge lah. Don't, don't need to do advertising for them, okay? 
This this is called product placement with Samsung. <laughs> but smart fridges, yes, correct. Smart fridges, smart watch, correct. But that's the good one. Smart watch. I'll I'll change the color a little bit. Uh, yeah. AI, AI, AI is um, AI is a bit vague though. Because AI, artificial intelligence. Um, normally refers to the software. It normally refers to the software that you load into the devices. So it is related, do you correct? It is related, but in this case, I'm asking for the hardware, the device that, that operates the AI. Uh, do you understand the difference? Dynamic robot. Okay, robots are actually robots, are in, whether they're dynamic or static. <laughs> like Siri, Siri is a, a static robot. I just talk to her only. <laughs> Robot vacuum. So oh, good, you're getting the idea, correct. Now, let's look on the other side. Can you identify devices that can that are electrical, but you don't need a program to run them? That means uh, you just on, it works. Then you off, oh, that's it. Okay, so we have chargers. Alarm clocks. Alarm clocks, no, though. Alarm clocks are programmable. Mm. Lamp, kettle, fans, ceiling fan, uh, uh, blender. Alarm clocks are programmable because you are programming the alarm. Unless you are talking about, or oh, unless you're talking about analog. Stove, uh. Let me write. Let me write that down. If you talk about an analog um, clock, yes. Um, if it's a normal stove, there's no programmable one. God, I know they exist also. So the um, that means the non-gas stove, the one you just on and off. I, I know they exist, but not very hard to find though. Mm. Okay lah. Stove got no program one. Okay, um, can you see the difference, uh, you guys? If you have a digital clock, that one is programmable. That one, digital clock, is electronic. Analog clocks can be electric. Stove also, same thing. That means, uh, like even all this, uh, your lamp, your kettles, your fans, right? That's a simple one. You also have programmable lamp, programmable kettles, programmable fans. Also got the kind where you set up, come on, right? Okay, at 3 o'clock, come on, 4 o'clock, go off. You can program that. Okay, lamps also, like the one, uh, okay. Um, you, you, oh, got, they got motion, like come on. No motion, come off. That is also programmable. Oh, hair dryer, yes, hair dryer also. The not the simple, simple one, you just thought Woo! and you dry your hair. Ah, okay, simple, simple one. Ah, that one can. So that means for electrical devices, uh, it's on off only. You gotta think of it this way. Um, all of these work only with on off. There are no programs involved. I'm trying to find a nice color so that it's like not so boring, lah, huh? Because see white color, screen ah, boring here. Yeah, okay, on I am supposed to change pen, but never mind. They're on off states only. So if it's the one which has levels, okay, um, to answer your question, like if it's levels, uh, like you just one, two, three, if it's simple one, you know, like the fans, you press one, two, three, different speeds, that one is still not programmable. That one is still simple because it's still considered on off. Programmable in the if levels would be more like uh, if you if it can control when it's the on and off, like, okay, switch off after three hours or automatic adjustment of levels. If it's hot, automatically goes up to level two. I go up to level three. Yeah. If you want to understand why, we let's let let's um think of it this way, yeah. Because those kind of levels of the fan, they're actually based on switches. That means if you have a circuit, what, bleh, if you have a circuit, 
Then what happens is actually there's, there's like a crocodile clip. Imagine uh, there's a, a crocodile clip here. That what happens is you have the level one, level two, level three. It's just to connect level one or level two or level three. So it's still very, very simple. So when you press that button, it's just changing, changing the connection to one, to two, to three. But it's still a simple circuit. So electrical devices, the circuits are very, very simple. Programmable means you can, it's like calculators, huh? Although you think hey, on and off only one, no, you, the fact is you have one plus one, that's already a program. The calculator needs to think and process the numbers. That's already, got, that's already a program. All right. Um, so like smart watches, smart fridges, because like you can do programs in it, ma, like you say, okay, ah, set alarm. Okay. Oh, set the alarm, please. Ah, that kind of stuff. Lah, huh? Like normal, normal watch is just, ah, now normal watch, that one is just electrical because you put the battery. Ah, this, <laughs> but if... Uh, they're programmable. You can measure your heart rate. All oh, uh, that one is electronic. Okay. So remember what we learned in uh, chapter three. Uh, this one, I don't, I, I don't know whether you remember, but never mind. You, I'll help you to recall. We did learn about three different kinds of materials in terms of conductivity, the categories. You had conductors, you had insulators, and you also had semiconductors. Semiconductors fall under the electronic category. And in this chapter, we will be learning more about semiconductors. That's why when you look at topic 5.2, you see, eh, semiconductor diode. Why the name so panjang? Ah, now we will, then we will learn more in 5.2, okay? So this is not yet 5.1. We haven't gone to 5.1 yet. This is an overview. The reason why you need to learn about electronics is because if you want to pursue a, a, a what I call a degree or certification in electrical and electronic engineering, you do need to have these basics of electronics. If you don't, too bad. You are already taking physics in SPM. You have to learn anyway. Okay, but look, it's not difficult. This chapter there's no calculations. Okay, it got got, but the calculation very to be done. It's not like like transformers, you know that kind. They're not so complicated. Yeah, it's a bit lah complicated, but it's very easy. And, and it's not as much as like electricity. So we won't be going into the P equals IV because IR stuff we won't do because you already learned before. So we're not going to learn in this chapter, okay? Um, so if you if you want to do, if you want to be an inventor or you want to improve things in the future, like let's say like you're looking at, oh, I want to be able to design better handphones. Design doesn't mean that what it looks like. That's aesthetics. Design meaning like, okay, I want it to be able to move faster, right? I want it to be able to eventually mow my lawn. I want it to be able to boil water for me. Ah, so all this kind also is, um, there's two parts, software, hardware. So hardware part is electronic. Software part, then uh, no, need, no need to know so much about this. Okay? Cool. So that, so, th so what, this is why we have to learn. Nah? This, so what we'll be learning in this chapter, right? Under semiconductors, there's actually many different kinds of components. Like there are electrical components, there are also electronic components. Like all these are lamp, motor, those are there's those um so motor is electromagnetic. Um electric electric components are like resistor, wires, uh, light bulb, all that is electric. Uh we will be focusing on electronic components in this chapter, but there's only two you learn, diode and transistors. Oh, got one more capacitor. Um, there's a lot, actually, there's a lot more, but you don't, don't need to learn so much lah, yeah, from five level, okay? All right. Can, can, can you all um, follow me so far? Can you understand? Okay. So, yeah, we haven't gone into the chapter yet. I'm just giving this overview so that you understand why we have to learn this stuff. So this is the difference. Huh? You can think of it as this part all we is co was covered in chapter three. This part we're going to learn in chapter five. Chapter four in between was electromagnetic. Electromagnetic is a combination of electrical and magnetic fields and how they work together to, to make different devices like the motor, the generator, and transformer. Okay, that one we've done chapter four. Okay, now we focus on chapter five. So the beginning of chapter five here, let's look at page 174, page 174, thermionic emission and cathode rays. Thermionic emission and cathode rays. Have you learned this term before? Thermionic emission? Eventually, I'll spell this correctly. Don't think so. Okay. Never mind. Mimang, um, you will not have heard this term until form <laughs> 5. <laughs> I'm just asking. Because like I said, I'm not familiar with your form 1, 2, 3 syllabus. 
All right. Um, don't look at the diagram on uh, page 174. Can you look at page 175? Page 175, that green number one over there. Okay. I'm not going to use the book to explain. I'm going to explain it my own way. So you um, observe the jam board first, okay? You observe the jam board first, okay? If we have a piece of metal, this is a metal piece. Doesn't matter what metal, okay? Doesn't matter what metal. Can be iron, can be copper, bronze, steel, can be an element, can be an alloy. Doesn't matter. You should have learned in chemistry that metals have free moving electrons. Correct or not? Have you learned this? Free moving electrons, yes? Yeah. Okay. So these free moving electrons are what give elect uh, the metals its unique properties. Because the free moving electrons make the metal a good electrical conductor and it also makes the metal a good heat conductor. You've learned this before in chemistry, correct? Well, not, this one is not chemistry, it's physics actually. The free moving electrons are what makes metals good electrical conductors and also good heat conductors, right? Okay. Don't put this in a circuit. Lah. We just have a piece of metal, okay? Now, I want you to think uh, logically, right? If we heat up this piece of metal, heat up. Like, how you heat up doesn't matter. You can take this metal piece, uh, okay? For example, this metal piece, and then you put Bunsen burner, okay? Or you go and put it near a heat source, uh, okay? Like, uh, the near the stove there, uh, like, the, you have induction cooker, okay? Now you, you have something hot, the steam coming out, ah, then you put uh, near the steam, come, make it hot doesn't matter as long as it gets hot enough right now this thing up uh, the electrons okay the, you have heat energy being supplied to the the metal the electrons start absorbing heat energy then when they start absorbing heat energy they're going to start moving so the kinetic energy it will be a kinetic energy pull up my bad the heat energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy so they're going to move they're going to move so much so they can actually leave the surface of the metal. You can actually go out, leave the surface of the metal. Where they go to, never mind. You not your concern yet. That one would be number two and number three. No, that one is number three. Number one, we look. Oh, the metal come out first. The metal's coming out of the 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 elect. The metal coming up. Pula. The electron is coming out from the metal piece. It's coming out. This process is known as thermionic emission, okay? So thermionic emission is the process of releasing free electrons from a heated, okay, heated metal surface, all right? Um, what's your textbook say? Oh, emission. I say meaning lah, same, same lah. Emission means release. So when you look at this term, thermionic emission, right, the term comes from uh, like this. I mean, the word emission, we already know. Lah, huh? Emission is the same meaning as release, right? Uh, it comes from the root word to emit. Thermionic is a combination of two root words. It's a combination of, oops. It's a combination of the word thermal, and ion. Thermal means what? Thermal means heat. Ion, why? Because it's involving, in this case, electrons. Does this make sense? Um, let's just very, very quickly discuss here. Based on what you understand now, if, let's say, we want to increase the thermionic emission, we want to have uh we want to increase the number of free electrons being released. What do you think we can do in this case? Like you want to have but you want to increase the rate of release of electrons. What can we do? More heat supplied. Yes, correct. So I'm gonna write that here. 
as factors. So the factor in this case means what are the factors affecting um, the rate of release. So one of the factors is the heat supply. So the more heat, the more electrons release. No? Okay. What? Okay. So let's talk about factors now rather than just increasing. What? What do you think? What else do you think could be a factor in the rate of release? Surface area. Yes, correct. So you increase the surface area, then there will be more electrons released. Do you, what other factors can you identify in this situation? In this situation. Type of metal, correct. Okay. One more thing. Uh, actually, that's all. That, that is all. But there's one more thing. If you check in the info gallery on your text, uh, on your on your page one seven five, there, it says if a layer of metal oxide like barium or strontium oxide is coated, the temperature required to release the electrons uh, will be reduced. So I'll just so this is just to let you know that uh, the presence. To write that um, uh, presence of barium oxide or strontium oxide okay, uh, increases the rate of so. So this one you don't need to memorize. Actually, I'm just sharing the factors with you. Um, but you normally don't need to memorize the factors. Uh, this is just uh, additional information. Okay, um, you can think of the presence of barium oxide or strontium oxide as a physical catalyst. Physical catalyst because you have learned in chemistry concept of chemical catalyst, right? Uh, catalysts, as we know, they increase the rate of reaction, but they do not partake in the reaction itself. Same thing with barium and strontium oxide, except this is not a chemical reaction. That's why we call this a physical catalyst, because it increases this, this rate of release, right? And by decreasing temperature, same thing as how catalysts work, Ma, right? Some catalysts, you learn before catalysts, Ma, can decrease temperature, but it, doesn't, it does not itself release electrons. It just helps the release the electrons. Okay. So this is not in your book. Uh, well, the last one, yes, it is in the info gallery. But I just want you to be aware of the different factors because um, although it's not in your textbook, I actually you should know because sometimes they do test you on the factors. Right? How to increase the rate of release? Okay. Yeah. Any questions up to this point? No, clear. Okay. Um, I don't know why they present the book. The book presented this information this way. Um, I don't even know why this information you still have to learn. I'll be very, very honest with you. I honestly thought this would be taken out of your syllabus because this technology is so outdated. Nobody uses it nowadays. I swear, nobody uses it nowadays. I in because form five the form five textbook wasn't released until until like like you know just before you started form five right I was I was thinking I was thinking okay lah like last year my SPM students uh the KBSM your seniors they learned this I thought okay this is the final year I have to teach this and then I was like because you know IGCSE they took this syllabus out from the took this out from the curriculum a long time ago because nobody uses it. So when I saw your textbook this year, I, I, I swear to God, I, I did a double take, flip, and I read again. I was like, why is it in here? Nobody uses the technology nowadays. Never mind. Okay. Um, in your syllabus, you have to learn more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think, I, I think now the time is 24. I, um, I know there's still a, quite a bit of time, but, um, I, I, I won't go into the whole thing today. Um, in fact, I probably won't refer to your, I, you, please refer to your textbook, but I won't be following it step by step by step in my explanation. I'm going to explain it my own way because, um, I want you to see the process and how, how it works. Understand this process. Then you come back to here. Then it makes sense. Okay. Let's talk about cathode ray tubes. Panjang punya cerita. Cathode ray tubes technology. Have any of you, maybe some of you still have, have you seen those televisions and monitors, computer monitors, 
where the backside very big one. Nowadays, all flat screen, ma, right? Nowadays, all, wow, the monitor, thin, thin one. Your TV, wow, can hang on the wall, thin, thin. Have you all seen those one? Big, the big one, then you carry one, wow, so heavy one. Thick voice, yeah, the thick voice. <laughs> Last time, any of you still have that? Do any of you still happen to have that? Some, some, some households still have. I, I know that some households still have. If you don't have, who has it? I also don't have. Like mine was my the one in my 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 family home was spoiled years ago. We threw it out, man. Who wants to keep like you know, <laughs> like who wants to, to keep the broken items? And the problem is they take up so much space, correct? Like oh my god, they take up so much space, and the screen size is small. Those kind of things, right? I mean, does it count if it's broken? You you still have the broken one, is it? Ah, okay. So I guess, yeah, you still have it then. It's just if it's not working, you can't, you won't be able to see what I mean uh, when we're learning, when we're learning about this cathode ray tubes law. That's all. But anyway, um, so to just elaborate a little bit about cathode ray tubes so that you understand what this, what we're going to learn um, before we jump into it. So cathode ray tubes is a technology, it's a type of technology used for those kind of old TVs and those old kind of monitors. They, and uh, when you learn, you will understand why the bags are so big. But well, we don't use them nowadays because because the technology required to make the image on screen is um, actually right. It's true color. Comparing that to today's kind of TV, that color is actually more accurate than uh, today's TV. But although that, I think that's not true nowadays because nowadays got four K. Ah, four K is better. Uh, we're talking about the lower level LCD TVs, lah. That one, the color comparison is not so LCD TVs. Some of them are not so good. But four K TVs, we have the HD four K TVs. Ah, uh, then of course that one is much much better, lah. Okay. So, but the problem also because that technology, those those kind of monitors and televisions, there is a maximum size that they can be. They cannot be very big, because. Uh, of the way the techn technology works when we learn about it you'll see you'll see why you, you can't have it too big uh you can't have the screen too big because if you want a sc big screen the bag has to be even bigger so that's not practical lah, because that means uh, in your living room half the living room gone ready law for the tv so that's so when they came out the 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 lcd tvs led tvs plasma tvs it, it's like so the technology is so much better you can have bigger screens all right but Cathode ray tubes were wonderful back then because these tubes enabled us to have uh, to receive video images. Audio is different. Audio is speaker, okay? Video images. So like CCTVs, for example. So in fact, nowadays, some CCTVs, they still use a small version of that. Because cheap, ma. This kind of technology is very, very cheap. It's very cheap. Uh, nowadays, last time, no. Nowadays, very cheap. But it's just that because it's... Uh, ma, fun, not practical, ma. You might as well just buy a computer monitor, which is small, thin, now 50 ringgit can get one second hand one, might as well get that one, right? So that's so that's the technology. So cathode ray tubes, right? Here's how it works. Um yeah, let me explain it this way, then you compare it to your textbook. Okay. Okay, so what we have here is if we want oh if we want a, the, the the metal piece right to to heat to release electrons let's say we have dry cells huh? the dry cell is enough what we do is we connect it to a filament the filament will undergo the myonic emission so the filament is like the light bulb filament very very thin very high resistance a lot of heat is generated if you as long as you don't insulate the electrons can be released now Electrons, what charge? Electrons, what charge? They are attracted to what charge? Positive, correct. So, in order to control the movement of electrons, you need to put something that's positively charged here so that the electrons can move there. How they control it, like, like one random positive thing there is very strange, huh? So here's what they do in the tubes. They connect this to a positive, another, another circuit, a positive terminal 
of an EHT power supply. Can you remember what's EHT? What it stands for? It's very dark here. EHT stands for what? Extra high tension, correct? Which means what? The voltage is very. Hi. So what happens here is, okay, sorry. They actually, right, make this filament. No, they don't. Um, oh, your textbook. Oh, your textbook do a different diagram. Sorry. So the film, just how I said the filament is the one releasing electrons. Sorry, your textbook change has changed. It's correct. Huh? Uh, sorry, there's two ways, actually. I, I was mentioning the old way. Um, the, the better way is to put another piece of metal very, very near the filament. Because remember, I told you, Ma, as long as you put something near a heat source, it gets hot, it will release electrons. So instead of the filament releasing electron, we put another metal piece. So this metal piece is very near the filament. The filament is applying heat. The filament supply heat. This metal piece is now the negative terminal of this power supply. And there's a space in between. Now, if you remember what we learned in chapter three, if you have extra high tension power supply, even though the circuit is not complete, you have them at a separate distance, right? The circuit can still somehow be forced to complete. How? In this case, because this metal piece is undergoing thermionic emission, that means this metal piece is releasing electrons. So the electrons, whoa, it's very hot in here. Let's have a, let, let's just get out of here, you know, it's too hot. So they jump out. Then, hey, look, buddies, that's a positive charge there. Woohoo! Then they go over that side, no? So what happens is to complete the circuit, uh, the electrons come out. See here, negative terminal now comes out, goes to the positive terminal. No? Po negative terminal is also known as the cathode. This is known as the anode. You learned before, right? Cathode anode, right? How to make this into a screen? They enclose the entire thing in a glass tube where the glass tube inside here is a vacuum. So it's sometimes known as a vacuum tube. Did I write that there? Yes, they did. Vacuum tube. And they have this thing here. Okay, yours is rounded lah. Sorry, the, the TV style lah, when it's, if it's a TV, right, it's actually, look, it looks like this. It's not rounded. It's actually uh, like a, like a touch light like that. This part here is actually the screen. That means if you take your floating eyeball and you look at it from here, right, you actually, you, this, this is your screen. The screen you see, the, the, this one lah, it's actually, this is the screen. Okay. This part, the screen, is coated. Oh, it's not in your book. Okay. Um, this part, I think they, because they mentioned, they, whatever they're teaching you in the first part is just a basic cathode ray tube. So I go a little bit advanced. This screen, normally they will coat it with a special metal, a special material, and we will call this a fluorescent screen. Now, this, that means uh, it's not just glass, there's actually some special material that they quote over here. Um, I can't remember the material, sorry. Let me Google it for, for you later. Because um, I thought I wasn't going to teach it this year, so I forgot already. Uh, so this is a special material here. They call it a fluorescent screen. What happens is this. Now, the anode is not just a metal piece. It's actually hollow, like a, like a cylinder like that. So this anode creates a positive pull. So the electrons whoo, get attracted and they get pulled. But as they get pulled, they move so fast, eh, eh, overshot. Move so fast, boom, the inertia takes them to go through. They will end up going straight through and they can hit the fluorescent screen. The fluorescent screen is made of a special material where it converts the kinetic energy of the electrons 
it will change it to light energy. So what happens is as it hits, it produces a light spot. That's how that's that's how cathode ray tubes work. So if you you if you look at the you know heartbeat monitors, T T T that one, huh? In the hospitals last time, in the hospitals last time, they used uh those those kind of EKG, not EKG, it's EKG, yeah. yeah. Those those kind of machines where they show the heart rate and all that, actually cathode ray tubes. The ones that show the heart rate on the heart monitor, they're, cat they're actually at the back there is cathode ray tubes. Now it is all digital. Now it is all digital. No more cathode ray tubes. But last time it was all cathode ray tubes. We will go into more detail how this works to show that that heart rate and all the pictures. We will go into more that. Go into that cathode ray tube. Now in this slide is just the basic. What is a cathode ray tube? Can you all follow so far? Okay, so um, go ahead, read one, two, three, one, two, three, and see whether this makes sense. But we'll stop here for now. Tomorrow we will go into more detail um, about how this can be used to make those those different kind of um, devices. Okay, those heart rate la and the TV la, how it works, how how it becomes all those things. Okay. So, by the way, if you, that's why if you ever see people that say, hey, don't use your handphone in a hospital and all that, right? Actually, nowadays, uh, it doesn't matter. But last time, yes, because last time, a lot, not only the heart rate monitor, a lot of machines work with this cathode ray tube. And the problem with handphones is because magnetic fields can, can disrupt, can change the pattern of the electrons. So that's why it can actually um, spoil the readings and all that. That was why last time. That's why nowadays, now, uh, people, though people say don't use handphone, um, it it is more like you know, a privacy issue and uh, you know like keeping silent and all that. Um, maybe there's other machines that could be affected, but it's not such a big problem as it is now. Hey, as it is last time. Yeah. Okay, up to here first, cause I also have. To